Well, good evening, folks, and it is an evening. Might not be when you're watching this, but it is right now. It's just gone 6 p.m. And for some time, I've wanted to get out of an evening and get down to the river. And I don't mean the little river where we last did the video where we were roving. I mean a proper river, big river, the River Trent. Um, 6 p.m. I want to get fishing really, hopefully, in about half an hour, 45 minutes, and fish till about half past nine. We're in the middle of this heat wave. The temperatures are just creeping up slowly slowly and it's going to be ridiculous soon and it makes fishing in the daytime really really uncomfortable uh, it's not great for fish welfare and it's it's not good for human welfare as well so that's why i'm thinking now evening sessions when i can get out get the okay from from the enemy indoors bit of gear in the in the uh, in the car and away we go i've hardly brought anything the plan is to dump myself between the barbell anglers at winthorpe now Winthorpe is the stretch that runs underneath the A1. So if ever you're going north or south on the A1 in the East Midlands and you go over the River Trent, it will be the Winthorpe section that you're drive, driving over. And it's very popular with barbell anglers. Rarely do you ever see anybody fishing the way I'm gonna do this evening, which is top and bottom floats, whether that be a, a, a stick float or a bolo float, um, long rod, and see how we go. I've either got any gear whatsoever, um, we'll head down to the river now, hopefully find ourselves a bit of room, I need a bit of space to, to run my float down, um, but the problem we've got is because night fishing is not allowed further upstream now, uh, further downstream on the Collingham section, a lot of anglers now are traversing towards Winthorpe because it does allow night fishing, so it's Friday night, might be a fair few on so let's have a look if that's no good we'll go a little bit further upstream past newark and, and see what's going on up there but really i want to jump on winthorpe it's the nearest section to me and it's nice and deep and because it's so warm right now and the river's got you know lost a lot of water um, i'm looking for a deeper section um where the fish are going to be a bit more comfortable so let's get down to the river bank and see see what's happening Right then, so we're at the river, and interestingly enough, there's a lot of work going on. Uh, we've got some dredging taking place. So there's a few diggers and, and a few bits and pieces going on. I'm, I'm not too sure what's happening. Um, will that make a difference? I'm not sure. It's not that low here. There's a lot more water in than I expected, which is great. So this is nice and deep. I think this will be perfect for a for a nice stick float a few silvers so let's get set up and get fishing well, I don't know what difference this dredging will make there's the famous A1 it's going over there that gives you an idea where I am well speaking of the A1 we decided to sit right underneath it bridge number 29 according to that sign and the reason why as I drove down the stretch um, and saw all the barbell anglers <laughs> There was, it was all much of a muchness. I can't really see the flow down there because it, it is still pretty low. Whereas here, I know that the fish are probably gonna be sheltering under this bridge in the really hot weather in the day. So they should still be around this area. There's a nice depth off the rod end. I'm fishing about seven foot, uh, which is about a rod length out. I've got a 15 foot stick float rod set up. Um, apart from the light with the sun right in my face, it looks a really good peg. There's a nice shallow glide uh, a nice glide going underneath so i'm just feeding some emp and casters with a couple of maggots and i put three balls in just downstream about 10 meters downstream so hopefully by the time my rig is running through um, it will be settled over that ground bait so i haven't had a cast yet so let's see if we can get a fish first chuck on the camera I think I'll start with a bronze maggot. I've got bronze and reds here with a couple of whites. And I'll talk you through the rig shortly. But for now, let's just see if we can't get ourselves a quick, you know, dace or something. Now, this wind's quite awkward, to be honest. <laughs> it's blowing into my face across here. So I've gone for quite a heavy float.
and the closed face reel should come in quite handy because of uh, this wind. casters now fishing in the water here got the waders on because the pegs actually set quite far back with the water being so low so it's just nice to actually get in the water and get behind the float properly. Right, that's, it's just going over where that ground bait is now, about there. So about 10 metres down the peg. There's a bite. So second run through, and we've hooked something. And it looks like a perch. Well, that's a nice start, isn't it? A lovely perch in that evening summer sun. And that's gone right down its throat, it's greedy perch. So, a lovely start, a couple of ounce. Start as we mean to go on. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a fish, get settled into a rhythm, and then we will talk through some tactics. Right, let's talk through some tactics then. So, what we've got is we have a Drennan alloy stick float and the reason why i've gone for alloy is because of this horrible wind that's that's sort of swirling around just for ease of casting it's point one point two five gram it's about seven foot deep two foot from the hook i've got a one gram olivet with a couple of locking shot three number eights and then i've got two number eight droppers six inches apart and then just on the hook length which is a 12 inch hook length pre-tied um, I've got a number 10 shot just to sort of keep it tidy towards the bottom. Hook length wise, uh, it's three pound main line and I just use the Drennan Carbon Match uh, pre-tied. It's a 16 to two and a half pounds, so 0.12. Just to give myself a chance, if I do hook anything decent, then, you know, that's not, it's quite a robust hook length. So we're just fishing about a rod length or so out, it's a 15 foot rod as I mentioned, so we're fishing about 15 foot or so in front of that rod end, in around seven foot of water, and it sort of gradually slopes off, and gradually slopes up here, so I'm fishing sort of down the shelf. As I say, I've put three balls of ground bait in, and what I'm doing, I'm just feeding a dozen or so casters slightly downstream, with some hemp over the top, and then some, just a pinch of maggots, just in front of me, because they sink a little bit slower. And just throw the, use the Olivet as your casting weight. And we can get quite nicely behind that float. But that wind is blowing right into my kipper, which is making it a little bit difficult. We've just got to keep that loose feed going in, nothing silly. Bit of an error with this sun right in my face, but. Let's miss the bite there then. A single bronze maggot on the hook. If we start getting pestered with any bleak or anything like that, then I'll double up and then I'm looking to change the caster and get a better stamp of fish. It's just trotting through nicely, given how low the river is, it's a it's going through lovely. And it's about there where the ground bait is. So about 10 metres down the peg. Just letting it go through with the speed of the current. There's a bite. 
right down the end of the peg. What's this? Another perch. Here's a nice chunky fish. A greedy fish. And we're always feeding downstream slightly as well because we don't want the fish coming right the way up in front of me. I need that float to settle and I need to be in that sort of killing zone if you like. And that killing zone I expect is around 10 metres downstream where I put those balls of ground bait in. Around there, where I actually just got a bite. I'm just going to try a caster now for the first time. Little bite. And that's a small dace. He's got he's escaped. It's interesting, so a change the caster brings a dace. Right, little change of tactics. Um, we've got about an hour to go, it's 20 past eight now. And what I've done is I've gone to more of a, a sort of a traditional stick float with a plastic stem, see if I can show you, tangled up on my rod, uh, a 6 before, and if you remember from my previous videos, the general rule of thumb with stick floats are one number four for every foot of water. We're fishing about seven foot, 6 before is fine. Um, and rather than bulk it down, what I've done, if I can get to it, is I've got this wind's a nightmare. I've got one number 10 on the hook length, same hook length, same line, another, a number eight above the hook length, another um, number eight, six inches above that, and then two number eight, six inches above that, two number eights a foot above that, and then two number eights a foot above that. So it's, it's a bit of an arc that we're trying to achieve and slightly slower fall because the bleak have stopped my either in, which is great, but I just felt with that bulk down alloy stick, um, it just felt like I was missing bites. But this wind's a bit of a nightmare. I'm getting stuck on all sorts here. So perch seem to be the dominant species, which is great because they are nice and chunky with the odd roach thrown in. Uh, but it has taken me a little bit of time just to change this float over. I've just got a feeling that they were feeling that bulk, that Oliver, and they were spitting out before I saw the bites because I was getting a lot of fish with the um, oblique, speak of the devil. I was getting a lot of fish where the hook was down its throat and the bite was coming on sort of too late. So now we've, uh, we're a little bit cuter, I guess. I've also put two more balls of that ground bait in, which has made a, a pretty instant impact. A little bit closer. So sort of seven or eight metres down the swim. About there now, where we are. And that's where I've been getting the bites. So I was getting casters shelled and I weren't seeing the bites before. It's been shelled again, but I saw that bite. So just a little bit more cute. Um, it's lovely with that sun going down now, but it is right in my eyes. It's really important to keep that loose feed going in. And it's going through fine, the wind's a bit annoying, but just a little bit more sensitive.
What it does mean, changing to this foot, it means I can't really hold back as aggressive as I, as I did before. Sometimes all you do, rather than letting it trot through, is just hold the float back so that bait rises, just like that, and I get a bite. And it just lifts the, the bait off the bottom a little bit. And sometimes prompts a bite, just like that, it's a little roach. Now this definitely wouldn't be the most productive way of silver fishing this evening, I'm sure. If I fished a feeder into the main flow of a long tail, probably a maggot feeder, maybe a ground bait feeder, um, you could probably build up a swim slightly quicker. But for me, this is just a lovely way of fishing. Small fish at the end of the run. Another little roach. Well, that wind's started to die off now, and that sun's going down on the horizon. We're getting some nice, chunky little perch. And we're just looking for a couple more bonus fish, I guess. It's a little roach. Double maggot seems to be the way forward. It's just the same feeding policy. It's a few casters and hemp downstream. Maggots just slightly in front of me, slightly down. And double bronze and this rig is much better than that first one like I say I'm I think I was missing bites um, it was just a bit too heavy it's a bit more finesse to this float there's a fish just as it's settled and that's a dace Now that wind's dropped, I've got a lot more control. But it definitely seems that the dace, roach, little bleaker, where I threw that ground bait, and the perch are just sat a little bit beyond them. So if I don't get a bite there, where my ground bait is, just let it go to the end of the swim. Hold the float back a little bit, right now. Just hold it back and let it go through a bit further. Nothing on that run through. That's a double maggot. Now 10 to 9 at night. This is what you, you could call the witching hour if we was fishing on a commercial. We'd expect all those better stamped carp to feed, but when we're on a river, it's a completely different beast. We don't know what's going to come along. I expect now that I'm six inches or so above the deck, I, I wouldn't expect any bonus fish.
We're just there now. We've gone past the ground bait. This is where I'd expect to get a perch. Right at the end of the swim now. There we go. I imagine this will be a perch. Oh, no, it's a roach and we, we missed him. He come off. A little roach. Right at the end of the swim. Another roach. Interesting, it's spitting up a couple of maggots. couple of fish just jumping out there, it suggests that perhaps there's a pike or two about. That's slightly better stamp. And that's a baby chub. Lovely stuff. That's the best fish so far. Well, definitely coming towards the end of the session now because the light's going. It is quarter past nine, so I fished for exactly two hours. Bit of that time was spent changing my float and whatnot. I've not battered it. Probably had two dozen fish. Bleak, perch, roach, dace, little chublet. But it's nice. Just a couple of hours of an evening. Running a stick through the pace of the river. Holding back now and then. Just swapping between tripping bottom. Ooh, feels a bit better. Definitely a better fish. Another perch. That's nice. But yeah, tripping bottom or six inches off the deck as I am now. That's, that's a lovely perch. And just, you know, spending a nice evening. Fishing, which is probably one of my favorite methods. As I say, I don't think it's the most productive method. I reckon if I'd have fished a feeder a bit more into the flow um, we might have had a few more and we'd have definitely give ourselves a chance of a bonus fish. Bream, chub, maybe barbel or an eel but this is just a, a really nice way of, of spending a couple of hours. So I think we'll have a couple more chucks and then just have a look what we've caught and call it a night. See if we get anything on this run through. Just when you're fishing a stick, it's really important to keep feeding regular, slightly downstream. We're trying to draw fish into our area as a little bite. It's that little dace. Yeah, we're trying to draw fish upstream to us. And, oh, 
<laughs> Another dice that's bit the dust. That's three I've missed the net with, or the spell off as I've swung in. But yeah, um, keep feeding, keep adjusting that depth, I'm trying to draw fish upstream. Well, that was very enjoyable. Just over two hours fishing, I think two hours 15, um, and I spent a bit of time re rigging up as well. Um, the microphone went then and I was just sort of showing the fish so I thought I'd just do this little end piece so long story short we started on that heavier rig 1.25 gram didn't feel right I think I was missing bites I think they were feeling that all of it so I went to a bit more of a strung out rig but not too light because there was still a lot of bleak uh, towards the surface we needed to get through them chunky roach chunky perch little chublet some bleak some little dace missed the net with four or five fish as well um, so i reckon four or five pound in two hours really really enjoyable so if you've not fished a stick float on a big river like this now is the time you know the water's a bit low it's a little bit less daunting um, but nevertheless very very enjoyable a couple of hours of an evening so uh, thanks for watching and uh, take care in this crazy hot weather that's coming <laughs>